Uganda's economy is largely driven by its rural agricultural population, with about 84% of the working population employed in agriculture. The sector contributes 42% of the Uganda's GDP and 80% of the export earnings. Vegetables and fruits are the major crop produced in all the districts of Uganda. This is because Uganda is located along the equator with a favorable climate for producing fruits and vegetables. Uganda is the second largest producer of fresh fruits and vegetables in sub-Sahara Africa after Nigeria, producing about 5.3 million tons per year, according to a report by UN Food and Agriculture Organization. However, most of the fruits and vegetables produced in Uganda are consumed locally and are produced by smallholder farmers. After harvest, they are transported to rural market centers for local consumers or are bought at a farm by neighbors. Other fruits and vegetables are transported to bigger market centers where most producers use the informal open-air markets and are organized once or twice a week. The EU market offers a huge potential for fruits and vegetable products in Uganda, which can increase income for farmers, traders and exporters and in turn increase Uganda's foreign exchange and earnings. But the country is not fully equipped to meet the international production and trade standards in fresh fruits and vegetables due to many number of challenges along the value chain. Normally the basis of uh, the certification or inspection and certification is uh, a standard. So now there are different uh, standards, like for example, if we are looking at organic certification. In uh, Europe, there's the EU regulation, uh, uh, 834-207, which is for agricultural production. So it has a list of requirements which uh, you, 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 the clients have to comply with. Now these requirements uh, start right from land preparation, planting materials or source of seeding, um, management of the farm, post-harvest handling, issues related with the contamination within the field and outside. And then the issue of uh, mixing, because when you are doing product flow uh, verification, you, you really need to know that the product which is going in for processing is actually coming from the fields which are certified. Then you have to look at the product flow or the traceability of the product. So traceability is very, very critical for this. Then two, we have to look at contamination. So during the processing, are there like chances of contamination when you're handling organic products? So these two are really very, very key. Now, <clears throat> because in the traceability, you also have issues to do maybe with mixing. For example, if you find a processing unit is handling both certified and non-certified, then there are always high chances of mixing the two qualities of certified and non-certified. So these are always issues which we, we focus highly during audit. For every product which you go for export, there are requirements for packaging. So now, for the different countries, like the way I told you, for the EU, there are requirements for the labels which are supposed to appear on the final product which goes for export. Similarly for the USA market, if you look at the, the NOP program, the USA NOP rule, so they also have requirements for, for labeling of the final package. The same with the Japan. At present, only a few commercial farmers are producing fresh vegetables up to the standard of major European supermarkets. Foreign supermarket requirements regarding quality, traceability and food safety are increasing and this leaves room only for serious and potential production of fresh produce. Non-compliancy with international quality standards and control means that the development potential of these promising economic sectors towards greater competitiveness and trade in the region and beyond is not yet sufficiently exploited. This situation limits the opportunities to achieve higher productivity and positive social and economic impacts such as employment, increased incomes and added value. Kangulu Mila Horticulture and Vanilla Cooperative Society Limited are one of the few cooperatives that have some of their smallholder farmers certified. Despite the stringent requirement to achieve satisfaction, the 70 farmers are now reaping the benefits from exporting their pineapples. <laughs>
mm. Nima e, Noga Paka ne mkutunda mm. Chokula virako Ndana siya katalike ulaya Eteko kubanga ya kire mune chitungu Atenga teyenge te kukwa yu Atebo ebe salwa Eteko kubanga ekomole duwa burunji wa aseno Ne wasikala ya kati Ngaka inchi emu Kaji kuma kubanga Ndana seyo tevunda maangu Tsuburu kumala mkatali E wiki bili Ne yoku sape jikuwa ta minana si tevunze Atete kukubanga Tuji brushinga wanseno Kujia yobu ukavo no bichafu Na kubamu nyera Atero kutula wansi mchikolo chena anansi Wanwe wafi mu Uganda Omutu tatunuli danyo Buyonjo wa nanansi Ya ya gala nanansi nge yenge de Atenga gunene Kati nanansi atege nde Nairobi Ebisere bisinga neze Nairobi Tebazi sala Bazi menya bumenya Okufuna certificate Inspector ja Kufuwebulaya Mamu sindika Ajana alambu le nimiro Ngabu haba saze oba fama Siku omu londe laba fama Mamu mweleza gulo wazilisti ajirina Ili diestimeti ya muajiraba Na alonda na ganja gala fama X Fama X haba mu laba bulunjo Kusinzi ilaku Overview map je wamu mweleza before Ngata naba kujia wano Yaba ya mula vieda Tifama X hali mchalo Che kamira Ni mugenda yo Na mubuza Na alambu le nimiro Wakaka sanga e nimiro Nyonjo terimu Nzigo taya dagala Na waka vintu vyo na akumo Butondo uvera vyo na tetungavo Manyimu Uganda kati uvera Wafu kabana valivo Kasta alambu le nimiro nga terimu kavera Na waka temuli tewali kavera Many farmers would want to be like them, but reaching the export market is still a big challenge for the fruit and vegetable sector. The farmers are not the only ones facing challenges. Fruit processors still grapple with attaining the expected processing standards. RUCID is the food processing and incubation center located in Mitiana district. They are processors of pineapples, hibiscus, passion fruit, and mango juice. Unfortunately, RUCID is only accredited to supply local markets. We have the three standards, the good manufacturing practices, the, the, the product standard, and labeling and packaging standards. We must be following those standards. The UNB standards have been made mandatory. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have been. For example, uh, now you, nobody can produce a juice and put it in the market unless you have a show mark. Mm -hmm. It is mandatory. Mm -hmm. If you don't put it there, if you don't have it, they will take away your product and they will charge you. We lack um, equipment. Because uh, when you see what we are actually doing here, uh, most of the work we are doing it manually. Uh, we need to see that uh, we reduce on the uh, manual handling of our juices, so that I think we, we reduce on the risk of contamination. Those pineapples should be able to move from the washing area. They come, they are sliced uh, automatically. Then they are, they are, when they are sliced, they are chopped. They go into, the, uh, into this machine uh, and then the juice goes into the pipe. So you find there's minimum contact. Juice manufacturers also face competition for producers who buy imported flavored concentrates and dilute them to make fruit drinks that are much cheaper. The marketing of fruit juices should therefore focus on the fact that they are made from fresh fruits with no additives. People add flavors and color. So basically, a fruit drink will be flavored. And that's why you hear flavored pineapple drink. And you cannot say flavored pineapple juice. You have to call it flavored pineapple drink. That means maybe you might have put there pineapple. But also, even if you don't put pineapple and you put a, a, a pineapple flavor and sugar and water and color, you call that one a flavored pineapple drink. And those are very common. Usually, I think um, 
drinks, they are flavored. Juices are real fruit juices. The EU is an important market for fresh fruit exports, but exporters have also suffered losses because sometimes their produce is intercepted in transit to the EU market due to failure to comply with current legal market norms and standard requirements. Tropical Dynasty he is a certified exporter of food products. They have been in this business for over 16 years. Their main market, Belgium and the Netherlands. We export uh, fruits and vegetables. We supply them uh, the, the capsicum products, the chilies. We supply them potatoes. We supply them beans and uh, spices. Professional exporters supplying the international markets are few. This is estimated that there are about 7 to 10 serious exporters supplying the international market. Supplemented with many opportunistic so-called briefcase exporters. Serious exporters often have their own production farms with additional outgrowers and provide technical support in good agronomy practices to outgrowers. Usually, these exporters have their own packing facilities compared to the briefcase exporters who often buy the produce on the open market or make informal agreements with farmers without providing any additional support. You must have uh, uh, very organized uh, farmers very set farmers, well-trained farmers, production sites, and these sites must be visited by our NPPO, the Minister of Agriculture, who regulate that, and our farmers must meet the standards of export production. Our farmers must have um, the records. As you know, we grew up working and farming without records. But our farmer, for the farmers to be able to adapt and become export uh, qualified farmers, they need to adapt, record, proper record keeping. Then we come to the pack house. Pack house level, you must have a pack house that fulfills all the requirements of an international normal standards, acceptable standards to export. For instance, the the regulations, the Parkhouse regulations, the Plant Protection Act, we, we will follow to, to ensure that the products we export uh, meet those uh, particular standards. And in the areas of hygiene, the areas of, uh, of uh, the, the, uh, the logistical standards like the truck hygiene, like how you handle your garbage. The fruits and vegetable producers in Uganda usually rely on basic knowledge for farming and post-harvest handling, while large-scale producers especially tend to employ good farming and post-harvest handling practices. Small and medium-scale processors usually have basic product satisfaction from UNBS to be able to sell on the local market. Tapping into the export market requires farmers to meet food safety management systems and global gap satisfaction, which has a huge financial burden that can only be shouldered by large-scale processors. In today's rapidly evolving markets, benchmarking the performance of a value chain is important as it helps us understand where we stand in relation to competitors or to a particular standard. A unified system of management and these activities can improve efficiency and lead to better outcomes for all the actors involved along the value chain. The German Development Corporation is supported by ESC Secretariat with a cooperation project to strengthen the quality infrastructure for selected economic sectors. Quality infrastructure refers to all services of metrology, standardization, accreditation and conformity assessment. The project's objective is to strengthen the quality infrastructure in the East African community according to the needs of the selected sectors in food production, processing and marketing. The project will use a Kalidena methodology which is a demand-driven approach that assesses and diagnoses quality infrastructure issues of each level in a value chain with the aim of increasing competitiveness. Value chains must certify set criteria such as real opportunities for export, experience and advances in chaining, diverse quality services, participating in SMEs in the chain, conscious need to improve the chain, and motivation of stakeholders to dedicate time and resources.
East African governments and all stakeholders need to engage and find mechanisms of supporting the quality system of producers, processors and exporters through training, equipment acquisition and satisfaction to ensure quality, public health and safety.